person meeting in September 20th. So sorry, sorry about that. Let me, um, I'm going to just, I'll, I just started the recording. No, you're great. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'll just do a little quick. Sorry, let's where did that go? Uh, just so we have it for uh, posterity, but Okay, we are interviewing interviewing Lisa Averill uh, for Ranked Choice Voting. Lisa, go ahead. Great, uh, thanks for having me tonight. We are, I'm here to ask for your endorsement um, on Measure 1B, that'll be on the Seattle ballot this November. Uh, it's gonna be a two-part question for voters. Uh, so we encourage everyone to vote yes on question one, which asks Seattle voters if they'd like to make a change to the way they elect uh, uh, candidates in the primary election. This will be for the primary only for city of Seattle races only. And then to vote yes on measure to pick measure 1B. That's the one for ranked choice voting, which is the really the only proven um, uh, reform on the ballot this fall with demonstrated track record uh, to improve uh, not only the process of elections by encouraging uh, voters to uh, engage in a process that lets them, uh, you know, uh, with more choices on the ballot, more say, uh, more voice and more say in, uh, in the election, uh, then uh, also uh, uh, we see places that are using ranked choice voting across the nation are electing uh, uh, go local governments that are more re reflective of the community. So we're seeing specifically more women and people of color running and winning. We're seeing more uh, positive campaigns, more issues focused campaigns. Uh, so uh, these are among uh, some of the civic benefits that ranked choice voting brings well-documented. And um, that's why I encourage you to endorse uh, measure 1B. I, I, I apologize, Ethan, Ethan, I can't, I can't re quite remember exactly how long you told me I have for this opening statement. Well, you have, you have 10 minutes if you want, just to, since it's not a candidate interview, yeah. usually we, we, we do that. But if you want okay. to go into detail a little bit more, you have the time to do that. Great. So, and, and again, just uh, uh, bear with me. I'm, I presented to the 36th last week. Can't recall if that was recorded or not. My sense is I don't need to go over with you all what ranked choice voting is, how it works. Happy to do that. And if you if you would, just because this is recorded, the other one was it. not, and this will be got shared it. with the e-board and the membership, et cetera. I know it's redundant. I apologize. No, I don't mind a good. bit. Happy, happy, happy to do that. Thank you for clarifying. So ranked choice voting is a simple change to the ballot that lets you as the voter uh, rank your backup choices when you vote. You'll, you'll still vote for your first choice, just like always. But instead of just being limited to making that one choice, you can list your second choice and your third choice if you have them. That way, if your first choice doesn't have enough support to win, your vote isn't wasted. It still it, it goes to, counts for your backup choice. It's analogous to making any choice in daily life. This morning, I thought when I woke up, I would finish off the rest of the lemon custard that I had was thinking about uh, for breakfast. I went to the refrigerator and my husband had beaten me to it. So instead I went to my backup choice and I had some cereal instead. We just make those decisions all the time for a backup. So it's a simple idea, voters get it. And in the 50 plus jurisdictions that are using ranked choice voting around our country, uh, we see that voters overwhelmingly uh, say it's simple to use, they like it, and they want to keep it. Uh, rank, as I mentioned, ranked choice voting has civic benefits that accrue for jurisdictions that adopt it um, from uh, voters finding more choices on their ballot, which is encour you know, encouraging more folks to get involved in the civic process when we see uh, as a voter more candidates who reflect our, our values. It's here in Washington state right now, when voters get their general election ballot, there are just two candidates in each race. And with a ranked choice ballot under ranked choice uh, rules, one can have more choices. Seattle would use ranked choice voting only in the primary, um, but again, it, would, it, it encourages more candidates to get into the race because candidates don't punish and weaken each other 
uh, by vote splitting uh, and as spoilers. So we see again, jurisdictions all over the country using ranked choice voting to uh, encourage more, more candidates to run uh, more voter participation. And then in terms of outcomes, we're seeing better representation that better reflects communities when uh, jurisdictions use ranked choice voting. So for example, last summer in New York City where ranked choice voting was used for the first time, uh, the city council went from uh, having 14 out of 51 council members were women, 14 out of 51. And now it's a majority women council with 31 women out of the 51 and uh, 26 are women of color. So we see a city council that is much more reflective of the community. And again, we're seeing similar results in city councils around the country where ranked choice voting is used. Those city councils are, are, are at gender parity, whereas the norm for city councils around the country is significantly fewer women represented. That's just one example of the way that ranked choice voting leads to more reflective outcomes. Some places that adopt ranked choice voting particularly lean into the, uh, the efficiency and cost savings. So in Utah, where 23 cities use ranked choice voting, uh, they really like the fact that it helps them save election costs and keep elections more efficient. So you find ranked choice voting used in a whole variety of ways around the country, um, uh, sometimes only in uh, one part of the election or, or another, like in Alaska, just used it last week. Uh, uh, and you know, with uh, the outcome that um, Mary, um, uh, now I'm, not, I'm gonna, I've lost how to say her last name. I, I need to practice that. It's not Peralta, but it's something like that. She's just uh, uh, one in a race that only used that in Alaska, they just use ranked choice voting in the general election. Other places use ranked choice voting in both the primary and the general, like the state of Maine does it that way. And many places that use ranked choice voting combine the two uh, rounds into a single round of voting. Seattle would, the Seattle measure, would use ranked choice voting only in the primary because we will still send the top two vote getters to the general election. So I think that, as I'm trying to think if I've missed anything I would like to hit, I think I'll just let you all ask your questions after that. That's my summary. That's great. Thank you so much, Lisa. Appreciate sure. that. Um, questions for Lisa and ranked choice voting. And just a reminder, are these um, one minute responses? That's right, yeah. So um, once, once you're asked the question, Lisa, you have one minute to respond. Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and ask a question. Uh, if you could just quickly summarize what you think the uh, benefits are of um, or advantages of, um, of uh, ranked choice voting over approval voting. Sure. Well, for one thing, again, just really lean into the fact that ranked choice voting is proven and tested. Um, uh, it, we, we've, it's been in use for more than 100 years around the world. Uh, it was invented in 1872 by an American, uh, been used in Australia for more than 100 years, uh, was used uh, in the middle part of the last century in this, in this uh, country, uh, continuously used in Cambridge, Massachusetts since 1941. Uh, and uh, over the last two decades, uh, starting with San Francisco in 2004, it's been adopted now, as I said, by about 50 jurisdictions. So very well studied very thoroughly studied. It has passed um, more than half a dozen court tests. Uh, so we know if Seattle voters adopt ranked choice voting, Ten we know times. it works uh, and we know that it's been tested in court. Thank you for reminding me one minute answers. Okay, other questions? I guess I could ask another question. Um, what do you say to um, folks who are concerned about the complexity of ranked choice voting for the voter? I really appreciate your asking. L Alaska used ranked choice voting last week for the first time. Exit uh, polls there uh, indicated that 85% of the voters said it was either very simple or simple to use ranked choice voting. And we find that consistently the case. Um, it is, uh, as I said at the outset, it's a 
uh, process of thinking that we're used to. It's intuitive for human beings. If I can't have my first choice, I, I know what my second choice is. I can go to my backup. And again, remember that with ranked choice voting, voters can still vote the way they always have. Just pick one and the ballot is perfectly valid. Uh, so uh, this uh, tale that ranked choice voting is somehow uh, complicated is really an insult to voters. And we just find that in jurisdiction after jurisdiction, voters resoundingly say that it is not complicated. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Other questions? Hmm. So um, do you, you get um, three choices? I mean, how many choices are involved? Um, mm -hmm. Or do you have um, 10 choices or six or? That's a great question. And different jurisdictions have different numbers of uh, rankings available to voters. Uh, here in Seattle, the uh, ordinance has been written for five, a maximum of five choices, which we at Fairboat Washington feel is a, a good sweet spot. Um, three rankings is, is, is proving to be a little bit too few. So we're glad that uh, we will have five. I, it's a it's, it's a just right number, not to, so many that voters can you know, feel overwhelmed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a question I, because I, you know, this is really very interesting. I'm curious why, in your opinion, this has not been something that's more widespread, the idea of ranked choice voting. Well, um, more widespread than it is. It's the fastest growing uh, nonpartisan voting reform in the country right now. It's on the ballot in, uh, oh, at least another half dozen jurisdictions around the country this, this November. Uh, it's under discussion in many, many more. So we're seeing it growing by leaps and bounds. Um, I, I guess one of the things that I just encounter most often, I guess, is just people who simply don't know about it. But the most common response once people find out about ranked choice voting is, oh my word, how come I never heard about that before? Because it makes so much sense. That's why it's catching on so quickly. Great. Um, we, we have time for a few more questions. Um, others? Why should I be unsold if I'm sold on rank choice? Why should I be unsold by your competitor? Well, um, I think one of the simple ideas, uh, again, I talked about tested and proven. So, you know, if Seattle voters were to pick uh, approval voting, you know, first stop would be court. It would need to go through a court test. It's never had one anywhere before. Again, leaning into tested and proven, we're talking about a voting method that has only been used a total of three times anywhere on the planet ever in history, twice in Fargo, North Dakota, and once in St. Louis. And those have just been in the last three years, I believe. So tested proven is one of the big ones. Um, uh, approval voting is very, very simple. It doesn't allow voters to distinguish between uh, levels of preference. And uh, one of the things we know about uh, government elections in this country is that people do care about their first choice. In order to be able to express a first choice, you need ranked choice voting and approval voting doesn't allow that. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Barbara, we're, um, we, you, you just came in. We're talking with Lisa Aral with Ranked Choice Voting. Do you have any questions for her as, you, as you're coming in? You're on mute. Thank you, Ethan. I, um, I do have questions, but I'm gonna listen um, a little bit longer because I'm not sure where you are in your interview. Thank you, Ethan. Yeah, no problem. We only have a few minutes left, so if you if you do have any questions, um, you can you can ask. But um, anybody else?
Okay. Um, I think unless, unless there's any other questions, I think that's that's great, Lisa. We appreciate you coming down. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, I assume you know enough about the local movement and our endorsers. Uh, if anybody wanted to ask me about that, that's something we didn't touch on. Why don't we ask you about that? <laughs> okay. Glad to do that. So we, we do have um, you know growing list of endorsers. I think I showed that again the other night on the um, should I should actually have that up handy and ready to go. King County Democrats just decided to endorse last week. We were thrilled. Um, Washington Community Alliance, Win Win, Washington for Equitable Representation Coalition, the League of Women Voters of Seattle King County, Washington Can, the Northwest Progressive Institute. Uh, BIPOC Education Coalition of Washington State, Young Democrats of Washington, Protect 17, Transit Writers Union, Sightline Institute, More Equitable Democracy. The 46th uh, legislative district was the first uh, legislative district we've heard from that has endorsed them also. So um, we're pretty proud of the local movement for ranked choice voting here in Washington State, including in Seattle. It has, as you can tell from the list of endorsers, just deep and broad roots. People, activists have been working for this for years, including very um, powerfully coming from communities of color here in Washington State and in Seattle, because they know this is a more equitable way to vote. And there are concerns about Washington Voting Rights Act violations uh, with approval voting. I, uh, I, I I'm sorry, could that. you, re there's concerns with, I, could you repeat the rest of that sentence, please? Yes, yes. Um, again, uh, uh, there, uh, approval voting has never been tested in court, has never, and, and uh, the two states that have used, that are using it now, uh, North Dakota and Missouri, neither one is a state with Voting Rights Act protections. Washington state does have a Voting Rights Act we passed in 2018. And uh, there's, uh, in, there's substantial concern uh, in, in the Washington for Equitable Representation Coalition that uh, approval voting would represent a violation of the Washington State Voting Rights Act uh, by diluting the effectiveness of the voices of communities of color. I could go into the details if you're interested, but not in one minute. Ethan, could I ask a question? Is, is we have any time remaining? We've got about one minute left, so if you could uh, ask it quick. Yeah. No, so that's not enough time. I was actually going to ask Lisa to give us a little bit of her background and how she, what, uh, what your evolution was to get to uh, being the voice in front you know, front face of this. <laughs> Thank you. Happy to do that super quickly. Um, 35 years ago, in front of my seventh grade math students, I was a math teacher teaching a lesson on the mathematics of voting. I learned about various voting methods and continued to teach that all through my teaching career. When it became uh, a possible to join a movement for ranked choice voting here in Washington State in 2016, I jumped right in and uh, have uh, found myself on a very steep and wonderful learning curve of working on this. And are you working as a volunteer or are you paid staff? I am now paid staff. I spent the first five years as a volunteer and I've just- uh, Who is your class. employer actually? Sorry? Um, who employs you? Fair uh, Vote Washington. Fair, Fair Vote, Vote Washington. Washington. Yeah, it's and a I'm, small nonprofit we started. Thank you. I've got to cut it off for time, mm -hmm. but Lisa, thank you so much for coming. And uh, I'm going to take Lisa. us off record here. Okay.